first panel discussion titled Enabling Market Transformation Towards Low Carbon and Affordable Appliances. This session is powered by CLASP. Rising residential energy consumption in India, driven by population growth and urbanization, is a major concern. The residential sector constitutes 30% of the total energy use, second only to industry. With universal electrification, reliance on electrical appliances for various purposes has surged. Encouraging efficient and affordable appliances is crucial for climate action and energy security. This session aims to discuss strategies for market transformation towards energy efficient appliances, promoting low carbon cost effective <coughs> options through expert insights and innovative solutions. To introduce the session, I would like to invite Mr. Bishal Thapa, Senior Director, CLASP to the dais. With 22 years of global experience, Mr. Thapa specializes in energy, climate, efficiency, and sustainability projects. He excels in designing and implementing multidimensional energy initiatives, collaborating with governments, development agencies, and private sector partners. An economist, he's skilled in financial analysis, quantitative modeling, and policy research. He also writes on political and social issues, holding a master's degree in economics from the University of Maryland, and an undergraduate degree in economics, mathematics, and political science from the Monmouth College. Mr. Bishal, please take the dais. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of CLASP, I am grateful to AEEE for allowing us to host this session and spotlight the issue on the importance of energy efficiency in appliances and equipment. I'm honored especially to be setting the context for the panel that is to follow. The session is titled Enabling Market Transformation Towards Low Carbon and Affordable Technologies. As you know, uh, setting the context is kind of a fancy term for saying it's just the trailer of the movie that is to follow. So uh, for this trailer and to set the context, I'm going to take you back, way, way, way back in time. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. This quote from Charles Dickens in 1859, as the first industrial revolution was just coming to an end and the seeds of the climate crisis were just being sown, is as relevant today as it was then. So the good times first. The Indian cricket team has won five matches in a row and looks like on course to make it a pretty fantastic World Cup. Um, definitely good times. Oh, six, they've already won? Okay. Six, yes, that's right, thank you. Um, and, and as Venkat remind, reminded us, Shah Rukh Khan's uh, three hit movies hit in a row, definitely good times. Uh, but we're also living in very, very troubled times, distressing times, with crises, not just a crisis deepening all around us. Definitely the worst of times. If the summers feel a lot hotter, it is because they actually are. If the weather events seem more erratic, frequent, and severe, it is because they actually are. The rate of warming in the past 15 years is 40% higher than it has been since 1970. Research from the Institute Stripe and Berkeley Earth have presented based on new data they've collected on warming that's taking place. Clamping in plaques are not just for the future, future generations to bear. They are here and they are now. But fortunately, all hope is also not lost. If this is the age of foolishness, this is also the age of wisdom. The path to limiting global climate warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius has definitely narrowed, as the International Ag Energy Agency, or IEA, puts it. But they can still be achieved with clean energy technologies and in two different <coughs> pathways that need to occur simultaneously. First, the doubling of energy efficiency progressed. And second, the tripling of renewable energy capacity. This particular focus, uh, session will focus on the first one, the doubling of energy efficiency. 
IEA is basically calling for the doubling of progress on energy efficiency to increase from the current average of about 2% to 4%. What does this mean? This basically means we got to start figuring out a way to decouple economic growth and energy use. Today, 1% increase in GDP causes energy use to increase by approximately 0.6. But we need to find a way. We need to find technologies and systems that will allow us to do much more with our energy. One unit of energy in 2030 must produce 40% higher output on GDP than it does today. That is the level we need to be operating at. Energy efficiency is, of course, a vast, vast undertaking, touching all aspects of our lives and all elements of society and the economy. This session focuses specifically on energy use from appliances and industries. It's a very specific segment, but an important one. As was mentioned earlier, 21% of electricity use in the residential sector uh, comes from the residential sector is driven by appliances. Industries account for 41%. It's clearly a very important area and also equally a big source of energy efficiency opportunity. Let me provide you a sense of what that scale and magnitude really means. Take the years between 2017, 2017, 18, and 2021, four years. Take that gap. Why that gap? Because that is the analysis that is presented in the Bureau of Energy Efficiency's latest available impact report. If you look at that four years, you will find that electricity generation has increased by approximately 140 billion units. This is only utilities. Non-utilities is a small fraction, but doesn't change much. So electricity generation, which in effect you could treat as total demand, has increased by 140 billion units. Generation from renewable energy sources during that same period rises by 65 billion units. So in other words, renewable energy has accounted for approximately half of the growth in generation. During the same time, those four years between 2017-18 and 2020-21, energy efficiency savings or energy savings from energy efficiency resulting from the standards and labeling program implemented by Bureau of Energy Efficiency accounts for 62 billion units. In other words, pretty much the same as what renewable energy delivers. If you include energy efficiency from additional components like LED lamps through the Ujala program or from market forces, you will find that the total energy savings from energy efficiency from appliances and equipment is almost 200 billion units. In other words, there would be three times the level of generation that's driven by renewable energy during that segment. And more importantly, in the absence of that, your demand would have essentially, your growth in demand would have essentially doubled. This is an opportunity we have to tap. But despite this potential, we find that we're still lagging. We're lagging in our ability to harness the opportunities that is represented by energy efficiency. Two years ago, at COP26, 15 countries signed up to a pledge to double energy efficiency from key appliances. CLASP's research that was released a few months ago labeled getting appliances back in track, back on track, suggests that actually these countries are lagging behind on these commitments. So out of the 15 metrics we see, only two are currently on track. Technically, these technologies are all available. It's all available and is already being widely used. So if you look at the International Energy Agency's net zero emissions pathway, if you look at what energy efficiency from appliances must be, you will find that across many of the key appliances, countries are already meeting that level, including India, on some of the appliances. The trick is how do we migrate all of these countries 
to those level of efficiency standards across, and, uh, across all of those appliances. In addition to that, energy efficiency is not just about saving energy or the resulting emissions. It also delivers tremendous impact for people. Doubling energy efficiency as a whole, that IEA estimated, would add something like 13 million jobs annually. Investments would increase from $600 billion that it is today to approximately 1.8 trillion or three times that matter annually by 2030. So the impact is large. The technology is there, the benefits are large scale, they reduce emissions, they lead to job growth, economic opportunities, and a tremendous potential to also incorporate equity. So why are we lagging behind? We know that one way to enhance efficiency of appliances and equipment is through minimum energy performance standards, a key measure or regulation. Already 110 countries around the world employ some form of minimum energy performance standard regulations or uh, programs, though they're varied in stringency, they're varied in scope quite significantly. India's standard and labeling program that is led by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency is one of the standout programs in the world and is often regarded as, um, uh, as a very strong illustration for what countries can do. We also know that these kinds of minimum energy performance regulations must take into account the technical feasibility. It must take into account commercial feasibility, ensuring that consumers are not significantly disadvantaged or that appliances are not made inaccessible to that. They must take into account productive um, and supply chain considerations, ensuring that these equipment can still be produced in a way that uh, ensures that it's adequately available. Policymakers remain attentive to all of these issues, and they must. So the question is, how do we use the potential of energy efficiency? How do we harness the capability of market transformations to accelerate energy efficiency of appliances and equipment in a way that also makes it accessible to consumers worldwide, in a way that saves money for consumers and at the same time delivers equity. As I told you at the beginning, the advantage of you know, running the trailer for the movie is that you just get to hit the juiciest past parts of the movie and then not really tell the story. So this is where I pause because it's very convenient for me. I don't have the answers to that questions. Um, so I'm going to let the, the movie unfold and in the spirit of uh, Shah Rukh Khan's three famous, uh, I guess, hit movies, this, I'm going to invoke his theme to say, picture abhi baki hai mera dost. <laughs> so hold on. Um, I want to hand over to Neha to lead the, uh, the, the panel discussion and roll the film. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, sir. So I would now like to introduce our moderator for this session, Ms. Neha Deegra, Senior Manager at CLASP. Ms. Dhingra provides overall management to CLASP India's program, including overseeing, leading, executing program activities. She has worked across a range of energy efficiency and clean energy access issues across India, Southeast Asia, and West Africa. Ms. Dhingra has over 10 years of experience in appliance energy efficiency standards and labeling with a specific interest and expertise in policy and regulatory analysis, compliance and policy design, and institutional capacity building. Ma'am. Thanks, Soumya. Thanks, Prashal, for setting the context. It just made my job a little bit easier. Uh, hi, everyone. A very warm good evening to you all. Thank you for joining us for this panel discussion where we are going to explore different strategies and initiatives for enabling market transformation towards highly efficient appliances. We basically want to discuss how do we leapfrog uh, the transition towards highly efficient appliances. Uh, we are joined by a diverse set of panelists who between them have tremendous experience across gov working across governmental agency, uh, India's largest energy, energy services company, industry, 
uh, research organization as well as academia. Now, uh, may I please invite on stage uh, Ms. Pravata Nalini Samil, who's Director, Standards and Labeling Program, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Uh, Ms. Samil has 16 years of experience in energy management and policy across various sectors of Indian economy, and she's presently leading uh, the Standards and Labeling Program for BEE, which is the flagship program that we have. Yeah. Next, may I please invite uh, Mr. Abhishek Gupta, uh, who's Head International and Strategy Energy Efficiency Services Limited. Uh, he has over 20 years of experience in energy and infrastructure sectors with specific intent towards a sustainable development. And he's leading all the key initiatives, especially the FANS program that ESL is rolling out. Uh, please join us on the stage. Uh, Next, can I please invite uh, Mr. Rahul Ramtekar. He's representing uh, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Manufacturers Association here. Uh, he has uh, extensive background in encompassing over 15 years of experience. And he is greatly involved in, uh, uh, from the industry side in helping with regulations as well as uh, coordinating with regulatory bodies such as BIS and BEE. Uh, now, may I please invite Mr. Yash Shukla. He's head and principal researcher at SEPT University. He has served as a lead, uh, as a lead on the several, on, uh, several ground groundbreaking research projects, including low energy cooling and ventilation systems in Indian residences. And he has also led evaluation of innovative cooling technologies and monitoring and benchmarking of Indian buildings. So, and as we all know that cooling consumes a whole, uh, significant amount of energy in the residence, in the residential household, so it'll be great to hear from you on the innovations that are taking place in the sector. Um, now we have our last panelist. Uh, can I please invite Shweta uh, Kulkarni, fellow Prayas Energy Group, to join us on the stage. She has over 10 years of experience in the energy policy and regulatory space with a focus on energy efficiency, excess, smart metering, and distributed renewable energy at Prayas. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this panel discussion. So I'll just say, um, I'll just share a brief about the format of the panel uh, discussion. So we'll have um, about 50 minutes for the panel discussion, where I'll ask questions. Uh, it'll be a moderated discussion. And then we'll open it up to the audience for about 20 minutes, where we'll take questions from audience. The idea is to make it very interactive. So uh, we'll try to get to that. And then we'll wrap it up. Thank you. Um, so my first question, uh, since Vishal has already laid the context behind the session, and he's emphasized about the importance of doubling the rate of energy efficiency, and at G20 Energy Transition, India, as well as several other countries, also agreed for voluntary commitment towards a voluntary action plan for doubling the rate of energy efficiency. So my first question is to you, uh, ma'am, about um, the SNL program, how it is working towards meeting that goal. It's a great program. It has resulted in a lot of savings for the country. And in the last two years, uh, it has resulted in several policies under the program. Several policies have transitioned onto the mandatory phase. So first of all, I want to congratulate you for the success of the program. Uh, but if you could shed some light on how the program is helping towards meeting our national as well as international targets and helping us move towards the goal of uh, energy efficiency that we have. Thanks, Neha. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank ATEE and CLASS for inviting me uh, to this uh, session. Uh, so uh, from, from morning here, we are talking about energy efficiency. Uh, are you able to, everybody able to hear me? Yes. OK. So uh, as I found, found here that lots of students are present here and uh, not like the other audience because other audience, they know about energy efficiency, what, what energy efficiency is all about and what appliances energy efficiency. So uh, first of all, the students actually are here. So it's a, uh, it's a great moment and uh, a good thing that uh, it's, it's a, uh, <coughs> um, 
it's a good opportunity for us that the students should know about energy efficiency because they have to look forward or they have to make it uh, forward uh, for, the, for our country. So before uh, answer to Neha's question, I would like to question uh, the students first that uh, what do you know about energy efficiency and uh, energy efficiency we have been talking about. So, koi ek answer kare ki energy efficiency ka matlab aapko kya samaj mein aata hai? Anybody? <coughs> Anyone wants to answer what is energy efficiency? No one? Yeah. Um, I would say energy efficiency would include uh, from if we are, uh, uh, by giving an example, if you're making a building, so starting from materials to the end of the project, how much we are saving. So it would include how much savings in uh, energy during production, during manufacturing, and the end, uh, whatever the total amount is, which would be like uh, also the carbon footprint of it. So the efficiency would be the end result where from start to the finish, we are uh, saving as much as possible so that later on we are able to make it, uh, like show it as like green energy which we like produce at the end of the day. Thank you so much for your answer. Uh, yes, you are right in your answer, but little bit different because there are two aspects. One is energy conservation, second is energy efficiency. So here, here we are talking about energy efficiency. So very simple thing I want to mention here, energy efficiency is with the minimum energy, we want to get the same amount of uh, output. So that is energy efficiency. If we uh, want to have the illumination of this room and we are consuming uh, X amount of energy, but if we can get uh, something less amount of energy with the same illumination, then that is energy efficiency. So apart from energy conservation, energy efficiency has a great aspect which we are talking about here. And then I'm coming, about coming to this uh, appliances energy efficiency. Bureau of Energy Efficiency has started this journey uh, during 2006, way back, 17 years before. And then we thought that after industry sector, this uh, appliances sector are energy intensive. So we should focus also on uh, appliances sector. So then we started this journey about uh, standards and labeling program. And I feel that most of the students who are present here, you must be heard about the star labeling program that uh, your ACs and refrigerator are having one star to five star. So this is the just <coughs> introduction of these standards and labeling program. But if I will, uh, talk about all this program, it will take a long time. So just to coming to Neha's answer, that uh, till date we have covered about 35 appliances, but uh, Vishalji, uh, 2023 is not only good from the World Cup point, point of view, or for uh, Saru Khan's movie's point of view. In 2023, we have included five more appliances under standards and labeling program. <laughs> Thank you so much. And recently we have launched the standards and labeling program for solar PV module. So on 20th of uh, October uh, by Honorable Minister of Power. So we have launched this. So uh, now we have 35 appliances and uh, we have 16 mandatory appliances. Mandatory appliances means uh, without star labeling, the manufacturer cannot sell in the market. So now we have 16. So uh, today, uh, the, uh, we made washing machine mandatory. So now, today we have uh, crossed uh, 15, so now we are 16 mandatory program. And another 19 voluntary program. So voluntary program means any manufacturer can register under this program or may not. If he wants, he can, or if he doesn't want, he may not. So directly coming to Neha's answer now, that every, uh, every period, we have one labeling period. Labeling, labeling period means once we fix up one performance standard for any particular appliance, suppose air conditioner. Air conditioner, we have fixed a 
performance standard. Now the uh, five star rating performance is five. That is ICR, we call it ICR, the energy efficiency ratio. So whenever we, you, you, you will go to buy a SE, you will see the ICR value, 3.1 or four, something it will be written there. <coughs> so now the <coughs> five star uh, ICR means the uh, performance standard is uh, five. So how to go for doubling this energy efficiency? So um, it's just the doubling the energy efficiency, it's a very easy term. But to achieve the doubling the energy efficiency is a huge, 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 huge task for everyone. So being the policy maker, uh, it, it's not easy for us just to roll out any regulation, uh, overnight regulation that all the manufacturers should go for uh, 6, uh, 6.2 or 6.4 or 6.5 ICR from this date onwards. So many factors come into, uh, comes here like the technology availability. If technology is available, then the viability. Then uh, what are the uh, different parameters like uh, the financial, where, where the financial come. So all these parameters actually affecting the doubling the energy efficiency. So in Bureau, we are trying very hard actually to increase the efficiency at least uh, 15, 10 to 15% at least uh, uh, after a uh, leveling period. But uh, we cannot assure whether we can uh, double the uh, MEP at the end of, uh, I mean, by 2030. But we are trying very hard. And uh, in every appliance, we are, we are targeting to uh, increase the performance standard by at least 10 to 15 percent uh, for every, after every leveling period. Thank you, Nia. Sorry if I am uh, no, so no, long. No, not at all. I, I think this was very helpful for everybody to understand what the program is and what the, uh, <coughs> what the, what these plans are and what are the challenges and you also kind of very successfully explained what are the key enablers for the program to be successful and what are the key requirements such as technology, consumer adoption. Those are the key parameters <coughs> which ensure, which, which kind of enable and decide how much transition can we do. So this brings me to my next question, which is uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Rahul. Um, so industry uh, has been taking a lot of, undertaking a lot of initiatives. Now, if we have to leapfrog the energy efficiency uh, instead of going the, uh, via the linear path, I, w I would like to understand from you, do we have the technology available for that? And if we do, then do we have the production capacity available in the country for that? And if not, then what are the gaps and how can those be addressed? So, uh, to start with, I would like to thank uh, AEEE again because, uh, see, uh, the programs like this uh, helps in awareness of mass, I will say, uh, and uh, really helps uh, the people who are interested in uh, increasing the energy efficiency to come forward and contribute in whatever way. So, congratulations to AEEE. And second, I think you heard from Madam that it is not only uh, the academics or industry, they are, they are not working right from the start, they are not working in isolation, but the policy makers are uh, very much into and they are coordinating with industry as well as academics and all other say, labs, etc., to make sure that it happens. And uh, that is a continuous process. So now coming to uh, Neha's question particularly, uh, you asked that uh, whether there is an infrastructure available, one, and whether there is a technology available. So as far as I, I will uh, answer the second first, the technology. See, uh, availability of technology, yes, there are high efficient ACs available. and. You can see BWE website also. There, there are uh, ISER of 6.2 available, everything. But when we talk about the feasibility of that technology uh, to make sure that that happens at a large scale, uh, that will be 
lacking at this point, I will say, but all the manufacturers are working towards this, number one. Second is, we are currently going through a bit of technology saturation phase. Why I am saying so? See, uh, if you consider a standard room AC, it contains a, a motor. In motor, we are using the best efficient technology currently available is the BLDC. We have gone to a heat exchanger, copper heat exchanger, also we are going to the smaller diameter of a tube which is giving a better efficiency now. Fans, we are giving a better profile, very silent fans are ge getting it. Compressors also, they, they are based inverter technology. So, best of best, uh, the technology saturation is there and now if you want to if increase the efficiency further, you end up with increasing the size of the AC. That is, you are adding more material. So, so there are there are two ways of increasing the efficiency. One is adding the technology and adding the material. Adding the material is never uh, like this path was never like a profitable path for industry as well as the individual customer also. So uh, we we need a, a sufficient gap normally between, so whenever a regulator changes a star labeling, industry need a sufficient gap to uh, cover the threshold that is break even, and then uh, make a enough profit and get enough time to adapt the new technology. So this period varies from, uh, say, a refrigerator, washing machine, or a AC system. Second is, Regarding production capability, yes, we have the production capability of whatever, uh, as far as the current technology is concerned, and I think uh, given enough time, uh, industry will develop. So there, there is no issue in uh, developing the new technology. Also, uh, say like the, <coughs> the schemes like tax breaks, uh, particularly, and the PLI scheme also helps uh, in uh, uh, increasing the production capacity. Uh, also, we were, industry was promoting from long that uh, uh, the, the different kind of GST levels for uh, uh, highly efficient AC. <coughs> so these are the ways we can, we can overcome. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for providing the whole context about technology. So now that we've uh, delved into the policy as well as technology aspects, it's time to move towards consumer affordability and market transformation. <coughs> So ESL has led uh, Ujala program, which is one of the most successful program India or the world has seen in terms of market transformation initiatives. Uh, at that point in time, LEDs were very, very expensive, and now the cost has been brought down to less than uh, one-fourth. So, but you, you ESL must have had its own learnings through the program, and now ESL has, launched, has recently launched FANS program, and tomorrow you're launching tender for two million, for procurement of two million fans, which is a big number. So congratulations, first of all. But uh, how are you taking some of the learnings that you've had from the LED program uh, into the fans program? Because th both the products are very different. Uh, so so how, so how do you ensure that you are replicating the success? Thanks, Neha. Good evening, one and all. Uh, Anybody who has not heard about Ujala? I'm sure the same would be the answer two years down the line for BLDC fans. That's the way we are working, frankly speaking. And why am I so confident is because of the fact the kind of learnings what we have had for doing Ujala a success is the collaboration at the forefront. So we are collaborating with multiple organizations who are there in the game, who wants to contribute, contribute positively for the energy efficiency sector in India. The second aspect happens to be get the product right. You may not get the right product in the first instant, but you have an opportunity to get the product right by incorporating the changes which are required with the customer. We are very well working on that. We have had this experience during Ujala days. We launched our, in fact, fan program also uh, 
during Ujala days also, but we could do only two and a half million at that time. And we could understand what are the areas where we need to work. B every two years is increasing the bar for energy efficiency. But fortunately, we are leading in that front because the fan which we would be bringing on table would be better than five star. But the challenge is, how will people be able to get it? Two important aspects in that. First one is the cost. And that's where we find that we are at the right place to aggregate the demand by doing the collaborations, not with the only the, with the organizations, but with people at large, the young guys who are there to make an impact in energy efficiency field in their careers going forward. They would be the partners for us to take us forward apart from the other people. Second one is about the availability of the product. We could see that in Ujala days, uh, you know, we had a lot of partners and we could hold a lot of inventories as well, you know, and that led to certain inefficiency in the, in the overall program. We are trying to completely do away with that kind of system. Now, my platform would be completely online, product would be available, you can get the product through online, the product would be delivered to your home step <coughs> through the same mode as efficiently as we are experiencing through, through Amazon and you know, Flipkarts. So these are the ways which we have tried to prune in our strategies for effective implementation of the program, not only for the fans, rather another program which is coming on stage is e-cooking. In fact, that is getting again launched tomorrow. Uh, that is about uh, electrical induction cook stoves, which again is going to be in bulk But in cooling space, again, uh, with, when we saw that during our super efficient air conditioning programs, we could find that an element which was important was the return and scrapping of the old product. We are trying to work around that. In fact, we had a discussion uh, earlier today with Samal Madam on this. For fan as well as the air conditioning program, what we are trying to again bring. The scrapping of the old product is actually an essential aspect of overall energy efficiency because I cannot be, you know, replacing an inefficient product with an efficient one and use the inefficient products at some other place. It's just like shifting the inefficiency to somewhere else, which is something which we, we cannot afford to because we as a nation have got a responsibility to do away with, with the inefficiencies. And that's where another opportunity for entrepreneurs is there that how can they do the scrapping, effective scrapping of the old products which are not going to be utilized again. But they have got good scrapping value as well. I was, I was just hearing to the, the madam who was talking about uh, some platforms for plastic recycling. You know, similar re-scrapping, re scrapping, uh, Effective scrapping can be, do, uh, can be done by young entrepreneurs through technology, definitely. So there can be many more ways which we are uh, trying to work on, but I think I should stop here too for uh, getting the other panelists to speak on. Uh, thanks, you brought in a very important point which is about the appliance replacement uh, for inefficient appliances. So I'll get to that uh, in a little bit, but before uh, we get there, I want to ask a question to uh, Shweta as well as Yash. Uh, so there's a lot, uh, I mean, there's one important piece in the puzzle, which is the consumer. Because no matter uh, what policies we have, no matter what technologies we have, it all has a role to play. But at the end, it is the consumer who's buying a product. So we have a labeling program, which go wherein star rating goes from one to five star. And the average uh, for, several products is the, the average star rating that's sold the most is three star. So what, what is the consumer angle like? What is the missing piece? How do we enable the transition towards five star, five star appliances so that we can also keep increasing the base efficiency in the market? 
uh, is it the awareness, is it the payback period, is it the understanding or something else? So if you could share your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think I'll also begin with saying thank you to AEEE and also to Neha and class for inviting us to be here today. Um, uh, very frankly, I think Neha has put it very succinctly to say that yes, policies are in place, yes, there are programs in place, but if you go to do a market survey and you really you know, try to assess how many of us even sitting here have super efficient fans or five-star rated fans in our own homes. And we'd probably see, you know, maybe a percent or two here. So of course, Abhishek Ji is making, putting his full efforts to help all of us get access to uh, efficient ceiling fans. Uh, and hopefully in the coming few years, most of us will start having these fans in our homes. But, um, I think there are two, three aspects to what needs to be understood when we talk about translation or transformation that we're expecting. So policy certainly is in place. Uh, they are strong enough to sort of support the market to really have energy efficient appliances. We certainly do have the technology, but do we have the capability for production? And once we have the, the capability for production, do we have the market which can really absorb these appliances. So uh, to me, there are, as a consumer or a consumer representative, there are three, four aspects which are, also, which are very, very important. One is we need to do enough promotion and uh, increase enough awareness about these appliances which are available in the market. Two, in order to kickstart the process, we certainly need, you know, an impetus that needs to be given. So through uh, the Ujala program, EESL certainly helped in bringing down the costs of the LED bulbs and which made it more accessible and affordable for people to really purchase LED. For other appliances, including ceiling fans, this is what we will have to do in the near future. Today, an efficient ceiling fan in the market is to the tune of 2,500, 3,000 rupees. Simil, uh, well, a, a non-efficient ceiling fan is available anywhere between the range of 700 to 1,000 to 1,200 bucks. So for a consumer to make that first initial investment, uh, it is necessary to get you know, some support in the form of a policy or a program to really enable that transformation to happen. And EESL, yes, is certainly doing its bit. It's also trying to do it at a massive scale, but that alone is not going to suffice. So a lot of state governments and also utilities need, need to step up in the future, make programs, make these appliances accessible to people or their consumers. Second, um, uh, I think uh, another important aspect is there is a lot of uh, lack of information in terms of uh, the efficiency that these appliances can really deliver. So knowing that an appliance has five star rating or three star rating, versus knowing what it is going to do to you or your electricity consumption over a certain period of time is something which is missing. And given the short term uh, or the high upfront cost that we are only talking about, uh, in the short term we don't look about, you know, what is going to happen to your electricity tariffs, let's say five years down the line or 10 years down the line. And what is the actual efficiency or the savings gain that we are going to get by translating to these appliances I think is also important. And finally, one other thing which I would like to bring in here is as a policy process, also as manufacturers, it is very, very critical and important today to get all the retailers and the vendors on board. Until I am able to get a five-star efficient appliance in my local shop, it is really difficult for me to make that trans trans uh, transformation to real efficient appliances. So I think I'll stop there. Thank you. So I'm going to answer this question from a um, research point of view on, and, and the research activities that we have been doing. Um, and I would say we, we fail uh, to penetrate the market because we are not giving the consumers they need or they want. Are we, are we selling the cooling or are we selling the comfort? And so fundamentally, even though there are efforts, we need to not sell the cooling, but we have to say what is the purpose and, and the compliances and the, and the processes has to be dis defined so the consumer would get what they really need versus us um, sitting and saying engineering wise that this is 
the possible scenarios and breaking that up. I think that is a fundamental paradigm shift that we need to look into if we are really wanting this um, uh, to reach to a wide set of consumers. Um, and I'll give you, you know, a simile of a phone. Uh, as we know, in, in the phone, people have started, everybody started buying the phone, not for the purpose of calling, but starting from for the photographs. You know, you, you are getting sold for because of the camera. Uh, uh, and you have to start thinking that, are we really achieving what, what we want to achieve by just increasing a percentage of efficiency there? So I think that's a fundamental shift that I would recommend to look at from the technology policy and, and, and the consumer point of view. The other example is um, <coughs> on the same part is uh, we are also needing when we look at the uh, compliance. Now, uh, you know, if you look at the title is, is low carbon and aff affordable appliances is what we are talking about. Um, so the policies have to start thinking about moving beyond energy efficiency and have a different elements to look at the carbon, uh, uh, low carbon appliances. Is that the same matrix? I think it will require a different way of thinking. The same design and approaches will have to be changed if we are trying to transform the market towards the, uh, towards the low carbon and affordable appliances. Uh, the last point I want to make here is that we have uh, voided the consumer of the choices. I think that's a fundamental flaw I see when I look at uh, residential air conditioning systems. I can buy at my home, I can buy different brands of AC, but at the end of the day, whenever I want to buy an air conditioning system as an, and as an appliance, there is only a split air conditioning system as an option. So if we really want to move and penetrate more, we actually, uh, to do a transformation, we have to provide additional solutions uh, yes, there will be technical challenges, there will be production challenges, there will be policies challenges, but we need to, uh, un until we, there is too much homogeneity, then we only have to pick between brand A and B and C. Um, until we again move past that challenge, it will be difficult to, uh, uh, for us to um, uh, enable the transformation that we are looking for. Thanks, so uh, Shweta and Yash, both of you, spoke about the need for making consumers aware, the need for having more options, more different type of technologies, more choices for the consumers to enable this transition. I'd like to go back to the point that uh, Abhishek uh, sir had raised, uh, which is about appliance replacement uh, and scrappage, not just increasing the, uh, the efficiency, but also taking the inefficient appliances out of the market. And I know about some of the efforts that we uh, has been or tr uh, trying to undertake in that regard, as well as industry has been making some efforts in that regard. So if you would like to talk about um, some of the efforts that you are uh, undertaking and what are the challenges that you are facing uh, in the scrappage <coughs> part. So uh, thank you, Abhishek and Neha for bringing that point. Uh, industry, uh, Basically, industry as well as uh, Rama uh, themselves are uh, always uh, promoting the replacement scheme of old ACs. Uh, I will talk about maybe an individual industry on their own. Uh, they have their own schemes uh, in their own format. Uh, Rama uh, Refrigeration Air Conditioners Manufacturers Association advertise uh, regularly and they have promoted uh, uh, changeover scheme means replacement scheme for old AC. Uh, that is particularly say if four, five years old AC is there or more than seven, eight years old AC that can be replaced and you get a, a good uh, replacement uh, uh, money for that. The other aspect of it is uh, say uh, one of the proposals uh, which is already there with PWE uh, for uh, replacement of more than 10 years old AC and uh, that is under consideration and uh, there were good inputs from BWE also and uh, hopefully that will uh, go ahead uh, in, in future, very early I will say. Uh, one more aspect that I, I think I updated this point but one aspect while uh, Yash and uh, 
everybody was talking about the consumer awareness. Uh, see, we are talking only about efficiency, right? So efficiency in choosing. You might be aware that consumer behavior pattern is also most important part. So you might be remembering BE has came up with 24 degree C uh, regulation. That was a very good step which was brought in because uh, having the same AC and you are running it in a more efficient way, number one. Second is consumer also needs to be aware that uh, bringing uh, efficient AC not always cost more. Uh, I will say from the OPEX point of view, uh, it everybody knows that OPEX will be uh, cheaper, but CAPEX will also go uh, cheap. Why? Because the electrical uh, connections which you have to do, you, you, you know the old ACs, they, they require all the separate electrical connection. Nowadays, the AC can fit into a regular uh, room wiring. So that is also one of the way a consumer needs to be made aware that the affordability has came. Not only through the appliance itself, but the installation cost. Uh, and also, uh, so the new technologies came come up with uh, the more ways for the sustained efficiencies. For example, the AC which you bring on a day one gives the uh, star rating performance, plus minus whatever in the range it is. But over the period, say after one year or two year, older AC may not give the same performance. Whereas new ACs come, normally new ACs come with the new technologies like say, uh, filter clean technologies, frost wash, on most of the companies are having this technology. So the sustained efficiency is the most important over the period, say four years, five years, it will give at least 80% uh, of the energy efficiency what they, it used to give on the day one. So this is also an important point we need to consider now. So um, you raised a very valid point about making consumers aware about some of the practices that can help improve efficiency. But I think the responsibility of that lies with each of us, uh, not just with the government, because industry does a lot of communication and awareness uh, and outreach related uh, activities. Uh, we have consumer research organizations, we have academia, we have everybody who can contribute in their own ways to make consumers aware. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I know you're not feeling well, so we can skip if you would not, okay, yeah. If you would like to respond to uh, uh, some of the initiatives that BE is planning to undertake, as well as the overall potential about market transformation of air conditioners. Uh, in addition to what uh, Mr. Rahul has just spoke about. Uh, so Rahul ji already mentioned that uh, we are in the process of uh, finalizing the AC replacement scheme, that we are actually developing uh, in association with Clask and Rama. And uh, uh, very soon we are going to uh, finalize and uh, we'll uh, start the implementation. And definitely the implementer like VESL uh, and some distribution companies, some private manufacturers, they can uh, play a good role in uh, implementation. So that we will see later on. So uh, this is something uh, we thought about because uh, air conditioner is such a appliance that is very energy intensive uh, uh, comparing to other appliances like uh, television or uh, uh, if you see uh, other refrigerator, but air conditioner uh, uh, is very an easy energy guzzler. So that is the uh, reason why we have chosen air conditioner replacement program first, because uh, since the students are here, I just want to uh, inform you that uh, <coughs> AC is the, uh, the life of AC is about uh, seven to eight years. Even if you just uh, uh, stretch the life, <coughs> you can go up to a, a 10 years. But you can't believe that most of our organizations, most of our in our houses also, we are using the ACs more than 15 years, more than 20 years. <coughs> so that is the reason why uh, we thought to develop this AC replacement program that at least the government offices which have old ACs more than uh, 10 years and more, 
that we uh, want to replace uh, uh, through a policy. And then we will also reach out to the consumer and uh, through VESL uh, uh, or some uh, private implementer that they can aggregate this market so that the uh, normal consumer can also come forward and uh, go for this replacement of it. So this is uh, one aspect uh, to your answer. Second thing, as uh, uh, Rahul ji uh, mentioned that uh, apart from all this discussion, the consumer behavior is the most important uh, aspect to this energy efficiency world. Whatever policy we make, whatever energy efficient technology we uh, rope in, if the consumer is not aware, if the consumer does not change its behavior, then the goal cannot be achieved. Like 24 degrees centigrade uh, we are talking about. But if you ask me what is the uh, actual comfortable temperature, if you, you, you please go back to your home and you see what is the comfortable temperature, you will find it about 27 degrees centigrade or 26 degrees centigrade. It depends. But 24 degrees centigrade, why we have kept it? That uh, some complaint may raise uh, from some segment of consumer that yes, 26 is not that uh, comfortable. But if you uh, see in your home, you, you must be running it about 26 or 27 degrees centigrade for if you feel comfortable. And if you uh, <coughs> want a, uh, you know, you will run it at 24 degree or 23 degrees centigrade, then you will use a blanket. So this is for, as the students are here, my appeal to all the students here, they are please uh, go back to your home and uh, spread this awareness that the AC should be run between 26, 27 degrees centigrade. So that you can save lots of uh, your electricity bill. So that is the, uh, uh, the schemes and the, all these uh, policies are at one place. But consumer behavior is the most important aspect here. Thank you. Thanks, so I'll quickly ask uh, one round of questions and then we'll open it up to the audience for uh, their questions. So there's a lot that has been spoken about consumer <coughs> awareness. Uh, could you uh, again share some more insights on what could be some of the effective strategies to increase that and what role each of us can play in uh, addressing it? Um, so as in, I think for, I mean, we've been talking a lot about AC replacement and AC uh, refurbishments and, uh, you know, changing. Uh, but we also need to realize that in India today, there must hardly be about, I don't know, 2%, 10% households which own air conditioners. So we still have a huge market out there waiting to become energy efficient without even the replacements happening, right? These are markets which are ripe and new, and they are going to get new air conditioners. And I think this is something that Yash brought up, which is more about the comfort aspect that we're looking at. So at comfort, one thing that we have been sort of you know, assessing as part of our uh, studies, et cetera, is the easiest appliance which gives you comfort is ceiling fans. And when we talk about ceiling fans, that's a magnitude that we are looking at rather than even air conditioner. So the air conditioner market may be pretty niche, but the ceiling fan market is huge. And that is one equipment which can become affordable, which can become accessible and efficient at the same time for a lot many households and also offices and industries at the same time. So I think um, as a part of, yes, all of the different roles that we are playing, we need to understand who is going to be the interface between the consumer and let's say, you know, the appliance or the policy. So there are different agencies which can become that, or which currently even are that interface, which is which a user or a <coughs> consumer is used to. So one being their utility, of course. So having systems where the utilities either drive these programs or even reach out to the consumers, asking them to start using energy efficient appliances, making these small, in several countries, these experiments have been tried where a small message is passed on their electricity bill saying if you convert your air conditioner to efficient or if you convert your ceiling fans to efficiency, how much energy can you save? One. Second, I think even as um, all of these organizations that we are representing here, 
how we reach out to the consumers is also very important. Like ma'am, I think very correctly said, sending out a message saying 24 degrees is something that you can set and save your electricity versus, I think she made a very brilliant point here which said that where does your thermal comfort lie? So if it's not 24, it can even be 26. So that is something that we need to try and push people to think about is what is it that we are taking to the people? Or what is it that we're taking to the consumer? And how is it that we're communicating? So right now, uh, again, in my personal <coughs> view, I think the retailers and vendors are very, very critical in this entire chain. If a retailer decides from tomorrow, I'm going to stock only energy efficient appliances, will that really make a difference? Will that make that market transformation? Or let's say ESL already has a mart right? ESL decides that all appliances that are being sold on any e-commerce platforms will be energy efficient. Will this make the market transformation? So these are some things that, you know, ideas we need to think about and work towards. Yeah, and then, and we need to raise awareness of these commercial establishments and these hotels and offices also to raise the temperature of air conditioning yeah. because it's always really, really cool. Uh, so, uh, one uh, last question to you and Yash. Uh, so, beyond fans um, and LED, are there any other appliances that ESL is planning to consider and bring in the market transformation program about? And uh, Yash, uh, to you, are there any successful international examples of market transformation programs that we could look <coughs> at in India? thinking it is like promotion of ESL products, but please don't mind, it is something which is beneficial for all of us. So <coughs> as far as air conditioning is concerned, we are coming up with a tender of 20,000 air conditioners uh, of 5.8 ISER, uh, which is definitely better than five-star ACs, which are there in the market, which is pegged at 5.0. So what we are trying actually to do is trying to bring in better technologies uh, to the market and making them affordable. And it will become affordable only when we have got the right kind of demands in the market. So we are actually working out with uh, definite state government <coughs> entities and uh, central government entities apart from large corporations who are willing to put in additional money to the start with, uh, which are actually going to break even within a couple of years or so if they go ahead with normal five-star AC versus 5.8 ISER rated air conditioners. But my journey uh, will not uh, stop here at 20,000 because this is just the initiation. We want to uh, scale it up at a very fast pace because we understand that the, e the faster we bridge the gap between three-star AC versus 5.8 ISER rating, AC, the better would be the adoption because currently market is actually currently so selling more of three star air conditioners and the price differential between the current three stars versus five star is huge and that's where we need to actually work on uh, and that would be able to do by doing this demand aggregation and collaboration with multiple organizations. And the thing which I just uh, spoke about was about electric cooking program. Uh, because we find that this particular program can hit at least 10 sustainable development goals out of 17 in just one shot. We find this program to be one of the biggest <coughs> impact makers on the socio-economic aspect of the society. Because this would be something which would be actually addressing the actual need of the household. Because we find India as a nation has got huge potential in terms of clean cooking because we are uh, actually uh, having so many side effects from the non so efficient cooking what we are actually practicing at most of the households in India because we are uh, still largely a rural uh, dominated economy and we find that women at large are having tough time not only in terms of the amount of time what they require for cooking, the kind of health impacts, the kind of water related uh, 
you know, uh, scarcity issues, the amount of time, and, and so many other aspects which can be covered by this single program. So we are actually working out to make this program really large. The first tranche is again of 20,000 uh, uh, induction cookies to what we are coming up. But this program would be scaled up at least to uh, a million or so in next one year in down the line. Just to uh, add something what uh, Mr. Abhishek uh, just informed about market transformation. See, market transformation does not happen overnight. So for market transformation, it takes time. Like we see the LED, la LED light. LED light, what you are getting now at uh, 30, 40 rupees, now uh, or 50 rupees max, what the LED rupees was earlier, the first uh, price was 1,000 rupees. In Bureau of Energy Efficiency, there were two LED light, uh, lamps, uh, uh, bulbs. Those were kept in DG's uh, room. And we used to go there to see what, what, what is this LED light. So, and the price was 1,000 rupees. Oh my God, 1,000 rupees I can't afford. 1,000 rupees LED. Then what we started in BWE to implement the LED village campaign. So we have state designated agencies in the states. And through this state HDS, we implemented the LED village campaign. What we did, the whole village actually we replaced with LED light. So we started with LED. And then we uh, actually um, established EESL. So the idea was that whatever policies we uh, make, that the EESL will implement those policies. So that we actually market transformed. And now if you talk about ceiling fan. Ceiling fan was voluntary from uh, for uh, just uh, till June, it was voluntary for us. And ceiling fan market, believe me, it's a huge unorganized sector. To make it mandatory, we took about 12 years. So finally, we made it mandatory. Now we made it mandatory, and now it will take time to, uh, to have the labeled fans available in the market. So, so this way, then the ESL has already started for implementation. So whatever the price is now, we are getting about 3,000 or 3,200 rupees for a five-star bill is a fan. So it will come down to maybe 1,500 rupees or 1,500 rupees once this program implements. So that way, the actually market transforms and we will do it. Thank you. <coughs> you still want me to answer that? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So um, I think Europe has been very successful in, in <coughs> demonstrating how appliances and that compliance and the robust mechanism to, um, to test, verify the performance, uh, establish certain standards of laboratories there to achieve uh, um, the, the compliance. Um, I do have a reservation of saying that, you know, that international examples can be imported because I think we are looking at the difference between a black and white TV and uh, you know 125 color TV that we see in India. There's a wide spectrum of difference that you'll see here. And I, th you know, the, the fortunate part for all of us is that the policymakers, uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Bureau of Indian Standards are keen to make the change. They are keen to hear. It is up to us to see what changes we need to bring on those compliances um, uh, and approaches that can lead to a to low carbon appliances. So that's the work that this community has to put together and pre provide evidences for the policymakers to take it forward. So I think that's a summary of what I wanted to say. Thank you. Now we'd like to open it up to the audience for their questions. Can somebody? Hi, this is architect uh, Kanchan Siddhe from VK Environmental. I think uh, lots, of, uh, lots of points of discussion that flood my mind right now, but I'll uh, start with uh, the first one, wherein we uh, spoke about awareness of the consumer and how the utility can support the consumer. I think one key stakeholder I'd like to bring in is the developer, the project proponent who currently does not get into the fit out part of the building. But uh, can we work on policies wherein at least the basic equipment, fans, everybody is going to install lights, everybody is going to install. And out of the 100% inventory, 
it is very likely that not more than 20, 30 percent are going to customize their fittings. So why not, uh, you know, pull in the developer community to sort of, you know, give a BLDC fan and where you have the economy of scale available with the developer, with the inventory he has. So our basic equipment, maybe water heating, everybody has a washing machine, everybody has a refrigerator. So that can't there be tie-ups wherein we cap this right at what, what is offered. So you will see developers offering, say, modular kitchens, or you know, when we do green buildings with them, they would give an exhaust fan, and so on and so forth. But I think that's a very key stakeholder for a quick, uh, you know, for a quick roll-on, I feel. So that is one aspect I'd like to sort of bring into discussion that can there be policies around that as to at least the fans maybe are sort of covered. So that reduces your fan wattage from what, 40 <coughs> to maybe 12 or 8 that we're talking about in case of BLDC. Second, I feel that um, in terms of the utility bills, uh, now I'm speaking from a normal consumer perspective, I see my bill, I rarely see my bill and how many units maybe, I see the amount and I pay the amount. Uh, like in European countries, I think uh, uh, yes, sir just mentioned, uh, and also the ENS code has already gotten, you know, the passport where you see how much intensity you consume. Isn't it high time that we have that intensity on our bills? Because when I go and calculate the ROI of individual equipment, it may not make sense, even if I was aware. But when I start looking at my overall intensity and then comparing it, probably it makes me more aware when I see that red, green, blue on my bill. So that was another point which I wanted to sort of bring up. And lastly, a question for Rahul, sir, that uh, we have known lo low energy cooling systems since age-old times, like Evapco or Radiant and, uh, you know, simple techniques like of cross ventilation maybe for moderate to warm and humid climates. Uh, so, and we always talk about climate responsive architecture, but never about climate responsive HVAC design, <coughs> which I feel uh, there's a lot of, uh, like you rightly mentioned that it has now got stagnated to how much more efficient in, in that area. <clears throat> a lot of work has, of course, uh, happened on the refrigerant side wherein we have zero ODP and really low GWP refrigerants coming out. But we see very li little technology innovation on the low energy, on the, you know, sort of mixed mode sort of technologies. So is there any specific reason for that? Because it's been stagnant for really, really long. So that's it. So I'll try to respond to your first question, madam. Uh, yes, we are talking to multiple developers at this stage. Uh, I'm not sure on the policy side, but developers are actually showing quite keen interest in providing the inbuilt solutions which are energy efficient. In fact, we had a discussion with Lodha, uh, uh, who's uh, amongst the prime builders in Mumbai suburban areas. They are also quite keen to work on energy efficient technologies to provide it as a solution uh, on equipment basis, number one. Number two, we are also proposing to have home solutions which are uh, you know, IoT based and that can be more efficient in terms of what can be utilized for minimizing their electricity bills. So these are two specific things which we are working with uh, multiple developers as of now. Let me rephrase uh, your question, whether I understood properly or not. You want to talk about like low energy overall systems. Uh, what uh, a particular, so you are more mainly talking about uh, the other options than air conditioning. So fortunately, while traveling over here, I had a discussion with Mr. Patankar today over here that once uh, in a good household, good, I am saying, a good interior household, uh, AC gets fitted, fan is removed. Have you observed this? This is, this is a very general, see in this room itself, we don't see fans at all. So <coughs> there are in between over there, but there is no fan. So fan is, I, I know a fan in, in normal, uh, say when we are talking penetration of AC, it is about, seven to eight percent in urban and two to three percent in overall. 
but those 2 to 3 percent also they are nowadays in sense of interior or something they are avoiding science so as, as i said it is a consumer behavior again so when we talk about cross ventilation system there are uh, i think uh, yash khan can put on like chilled beam system the these are the options available but uh, we need to really make uh, th there are two things one is you as, as a consumer you need to bring it in a plug and play manner so uh, when you talk about appliances when you want to put it in a uh, regular uh, say a consumers home offices etc smaller offices i am talking it should be plug and play that is one of the limitation on other part i think ecbc has done a good job uh, and also the green building programs which india is having they are doing a good job uh, it may not be visible very clearly i think uh, maybe or you might not be re read on that front but yes they are doing good good job in terms of uh, bigger appliances where you need a higher efficiency so for example i think uh, madam can mention chiller has also brought under uh, the energy efficiency program and ma and uh, from 1st january it will be mandatory so uh, the things are happening uh, i think uh, and also uh, there is a building code uh, i think there is also a discussion started on building code as well so these aspects will come under these bigger pictures uh, building code etc uh, as far as appliances is concerned uh, star you either you need to altogether add a new technology as an appliance or you need to change the policies like green building code or say ecbc etc so uh, a path are different to just to answer your question uh, i'll pass your sec second question because we'd like to take more questions from the audience uh, so yeah uh, next you can so my name is Shirish and my question is to Abhishek sir. So uh, you, you talked about Ujala scheme and fans and cook stoves. So apart from that, I'm, I just want to understand that what are your thoughts on including uh, motors into the marking transformation uh, program that you are having? And also, I mean, given a fact that most of the countries have 52 IE3 and higher motors and India is still at IE2. So how do you see uh, the future for India? This is uh, the question to you, and maybe Bureau of Energy Efficiency can also respond to this. Neha, please don't blame me for <laughs> talking about another program of ESL, <laughs> which is called <laughs> National Motor Replacement Program. This program has already uh, started in, I think, 2019, if I'm not wrong. And in the first uh, step, uh, when IE2 was mandatory and it it still continues to be mandatory. We had already moved ahead to IE3. Uh, and the good part is that we have actually sold the motors to the best of the customers in India. That program could not be scaled up uh, to the extent what we desire. And in between some specific things happened that we found that probably IE4 is a better one to bet for ESL. Uh, why am I saying so? Because uh, IE2 is mandatory and a lot of progressive customers have already moved to IE3, what we have seen. Is still, the penetration is quite less as compared to what we uh, wanted to. But we are doing parallel activity at, as of now. We are, we are doing pilot for IE4 and we are again coming up with big tender for IE3 motors. Uh, that's one part. Second thing what we are doing is increasing the br bandwidth of the motors. Initially, we came up with uh, LT motors up to 75 kilowatt. Now we are increasing it to 150 kilowatt because we find that more than 80% of the motors in India are actually up to 150 kilowatt only. Uh, and and uh, we want to address that in terms of getting it uh, available to not only the large corporates, rather to MSMEs as well, because we find that the motor utilization in MSME sector is phenomenal and, and, and at, at a very, very high uh, stage of utilization. 
So we are specifically targeting with two MSME sector through an MRP program with support of specific financial institutions who can help fund these uh, projects for MSME players at large. Thank you. Uh, Mahesh Padankar, MPN Systems. I have a uh, uh, couple of sort of observations and questions. I'll keep it short. Uh, first thing is, uh, as we already have uh, 40 uh, appliances under the Science and Development Program and kudos to uh, BEE, uh, I think it's also opportune to now include a few more. And one particular end use that I would like BE to consider is heat pumps. Uh, and if you really go for heat pumps, we're going to reduce substantial load for the water heating services in the individual houses. Perhaps the Lodha one that you talked about, you can try something out there. Because I was discussing with uh, Rahul ji uh, when we were driving here, uh, we really do not see uh, a lot of uh, brands uh, launching heat pumps for water heating as an application. So I think that's one particular thing that I would sort of uh, urge you all to consider. Second one is, as I'm seeing here, B, ESL, Preas, Class, I think it's really important to move towards democratizing the data for appliance use and the energy consumption of appliances. Preas did put it out in the public domain in the past, but their programs ap appear to have sort of now tapered down. I really would urge Class, B, uh, ESL, Preas, etc., cetera, to uh, uh, sort of wire 10,000 appliances throughout the country. And that will sort of instill a lot of awareness amongst the consumers. A lot of interesting references were made today uh, about uh, movies and uh, the cricket, right? So in terms of consumer awareness, we have seen now um, uh, pan masalas being branded by cricketers and the actors. So how about we all together convincing a Shah Rukh Khan and Sunil Gavaskar to start advertising uh, BLDC, perhaps uh, Avishek ji can put that already in their program design <laughs> and carve out a budget, yeah? Uh, and lastly, and I'll stop here, uh, really nice to see the e-cooking one. Uh, I don't know how tandoori roti can be made on an e-cooking, but uh, I really would like to sort of uh, suggest some kind of uh, aggregation even in the rural cooking, and we all have uh, experience the Sanja Chula kind of a concept where you have a community cooking. So the way we are looking at community water heating through heat pumps, I think it's also opportune to have community kitchens to reduce the overall cooking load itself for LPG and so on and so forth. A bit bizarre idea, but I thought I must express this here. Thank you. suggestion is well taken, but we have uh, many more appliances in queue that we have already started the market uh, analysis, although it's like VG cooler, display cabinet, and uh, uh, the water cooler, evaporative cooler, so widely used, uh, being used by the consumer. So yes, definitely we will take it in future. Thank you. Yeah, and just, uh, um, yeah. So one more question. Uh, so uh, I mean, my question is more related to, I mean, uh, it's, it's great to talk about the energy efficiency side. But uh, also, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's already done. Uh, but could we also talk about, uh, you know, people reducing their energy consumption? I'll give you an example. We did an experiment in the class. The first day, we, we closed all the windows and doors. And we switched on the AC and fan and people were feeling cold. I mean, and we were like just going from the humid months to, you know, onset of winter, but not there yet. And the next day we switched off the AC and the fans. We opened all the windows and doors. When we started, we were like, can you even do that? <laughs> Why are you doing that? When they started, they were like, they're not sure that, you know, whether they'll be comfortable. But then uh, after the three hour class, they were like, you know, this feels much better. But we could have never thought that we could even do this. So I mean, maybe again, adding to uh, you know, could we spread more awareness about uh, you know that apart from energy efficiency, the energy consumption could also be reduced. Uh, and of course, we also measured the carbon dioxide levels. The indoor air quality was much better because the windows were open. 
but we were also thinking that you know is it also not integrated with the the architecture of the buildings you know the buildings which will have higher window to wall ratios which will help us with natural ventilation versus the buildings which where the split air conditioners could work you know maybe i don't know if they would work or not there was a the point made earlier so could that i mean i think what yash said earlier about uh, you know think thinking of these other systems personal comfort systems if you're talking about air conditioning or low energy and ventilation could could that go together so i don't know what are your thoughts should we accelerate uh, you know working into you know the the tech the the architecture uh, the policy all working together to achieve something which is much greater you know like we say the the sum of parts is greater than the whole so i don't know what your thoughts are thank you in fact uh, i'll try to answer uh, your question about the cooking one the rural area cooking in fact is something which uh, we are very actively we are very actively considering and we are actually working out on a solution wherein uh, solar based cooking can also be there in fact we have already submitted our proposals to couple of state governments in this regard uh, because we find that electric cooking is something which will require uh, significant improvement in overall infrastructure of for the transmission and distribution of electricity as well so it will require a concerted approach uh, instead of having you know a piecemeal one and why we are in including solar in this scheme of things is because of the fact that we find that the customer can be net generator in that case and the moment that guy is having net meter at his place we would be sure about the distribution network at uh, which is going to his ho home at that particular point of time this will solve both the issues about the cooking as well having the access of electricity which is uh, you know not very certain to a, to some extent in parts of the india so that's how we are trying to address in fact i'll try to address your heat pump thing as well sir. so we are working uh, one this heat pump solution in ladakh has up now uh, because we find that that area uh, specifically requires huge amount of energy efficient heat pump solutions <coughs> because the cost of uh, heating uh, per se is mostly through diesel and all which is way too costly and having huge impact on the environment so government is specifically putting up certain efforts to address that uh, so there is a program called carbon neutral ladakh it is part of that yeah. uh, i'll try to answer your question that uh, whether it should be only we should consider only energy efficiency or uh, other design aspects uh, architectural aspect of a building definitely yes because uh, all these factors actually will uh, help us to uh, achieve more like if you ha heard about this energy conservation building code like other codes are also there some other organization are also working on it so bureau uh, is uh, have has come up with energy conservation building code so it has uh, it has dif parameters defined for everything so when uh, as you likely mentioned i mentioned that uh, when you um, open the window you feel better but uh, at the same time putting uh, putting the ac on and uh, uh, opening the window is not the solution so at this we have to see what should be the maximum uh, possible solution that will make my ac more energy efficient like uh, uh, putting the fan on and then it will actually you can make the ac 2 degree centigrade higher if your uh, fan is uh, on then you can run the ac at 28 degree centigrade otherwise you have to run it at 26 degree centigrade so that is the that that those aspects you have to consider and now we are talking about that we are talking about energy efficiency and this cold wave so much cold <laughs> wave is coming <laughs> from the from behind and i'm not able to actually tolerate this cold wind here so 
this is actually the consumer behavior uh, needs to be changed as you are the future generation. So these aspects you have to keep in mind. Thank you. I'll just make a quick comment. I think what Jai you said and, and I think what she said makes, there is no other way but to go for it. Uh, and and uh, as uh, you know, uh, as we heard, the policies makers are making changes that will help the elements. But I think there will need to be a market disruptor. I think our keynote mentioned who has to come in and bring that element which have been lost. We are becoming more homogenized. We are you know industrialized, and and, and they have to get out of their comfort zone by you pushing them. Right? Everybody has to be out of the. We have to get in our comfort zone, but also get people out of comfort zone so that we push the boundaries. So there is no other way, but I think one thing I wanted to bring is that the students here where the, in the market disruption has to come in, where that integration of building as a system has to come in finally to deliver, although it's beyond the scope of this particular uh, um, session, which is focusing on appliances. I think that's very important for the student to take away. I think one quick comment I'd like to share uh, on the point that uh, the person raised is, yes, I mean, in, in true terms, you need to have architecture, you need to have systems in place, which will all sort of cater to or push people to move towards energy conservation and use energy efficiency. But I think one market transformation element or one market disruptor, which we are not talking in the room right now, but all of us deal with it every day is the retail tariffs for electricity that we are all paying. Today it is not pinching our pockets because we don't really, you know, those prices are, I would say, heavily subsidized. Tomorrow when the subsidy is walking out of the room or when market, you know, starts playing a role or we have transformative elements like time of day tariffs that will start applying, then it will push us to really move towards energy efficiency and will make us more conscious about architecture, about your wall window ratios and what you're taking in versus what is going out. So I think we need to be conscious that, you know, we are living in a, in a time where subsidy is really taking care of most of our things. Tomorrow it may not. And we need to start becoming conscious about <coughs> it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't have time to take any more questions. Um, Quick ones, maybe? 20 minutes over, so uh, all the panelists will be outside, and if anybody has any pertinent questions, I'd please, I, I'll, I'll request you to please ask them right outside. Uh, I want to thank all the panelists for the enriching discussion, especially ma'am who came here despite not being uh, very well. I want to thank AEEE team, Rashi especially, for helping us coordinate and organize this session and to organize the entire event for a special thanks to AEEE team and a special thank to, thanks to the, all the audience for being here and sitting here patiently through the discussion. Thank you. But, so uh, one request to AEEE that please give a suggestion to this uh, resort that please make their temperature 27 degrees centigrade. Otherwise the panelists will be they will cough and they can speak. Every session will end on time <laughs> because everybody wants to get out. Just, uh, I'll uh, bother you once more. I saw a girl in the back who was raising her hand again and again. If somebody could pass the mic to her. Uh, just one second. Because I saw her. Huh? Yeah. So if you could raise a question. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for uh, mentioning me and allowing me to speak. My name is Mehek, and uh, I'm not a college student, but I'm here because I'm passionate about uh, energy efficiency. And uh, there are two doubts that I have on two different segments. Number one, uh, Abhishek, sir, you spoke about how there is uh, there are replacement programs in um, already, uh, like mentioned, loops, or like we are getting into launching them and uh, seeing them to fructification. But, uh, sir, what are we doing with after the replacement? What is happening, you know, between the replacement and, um, you know, s after it's replaced, basically what are the uh, energy efficient or material efficient uh, plans that we have? And my second doubt is actually for uh, ma'am uh, representing, ma'am, I have a little bit of difficulty with your name. 
but uh, sorry ma'am my name is prabhati prabhati okay uh, ma'am then i am looking for you and yash sir to explain to me a little bit on uh, now i understand applications or appliances are uh, you know what we see on a daily basis like air conditioners but the way i see it there are appliances in every segment of society and while we speak about the higher segment of society what about the appliances in the lower segment of society especially in cooling how are we looking to make them energy efficient i didn't, I didn't get your question ma'am for example uh, let you, me take are you asking whether there are different segment of appliances for the uh, upper class and uh, different segment for the lower class are you asking me like that no ma'am uh, now we are looking at cooling uh, as a almost luxury when we you know we we add cooling specifically for our comfort but i am looking at uh, cooling for say uh, produce for um, uh, eatable for uh, you know animals storage or, or keeping the different uh, parts of society that you know we look at different industries that have different applications of cooling so when we are currently now i'm new to this space so i'm trying to understand since you have a little bit of you know experience i'm trying to understand are we already moving front in those segments or are we currently in the nascent stages of the luxury side of cooling okay so uh, you just want to ask whether we ha we are already uh, only working on comfort air conditioning or we are also working on uh, refrigeration, uh, cold chain refrigeration. Yes. So yes, we are also working uh, on cold chain refrigeration and uh, uh, maybe uh, within a couple of months we'll be, we will be able to actually develop the standards for some of the components that are being used uh, in cold chain refrigeration. Right, okay, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Your question was about uh, what happens to the old device or uh, what happens to the new device after a couple of years? So my question was the beginning part of uh, you know your understanding, sir, where I want to know what happens to the old device. How okay. are we setting systems in place for that as well? Yeah, actually what happens, I, I just give you an example. There's a program called demand side management by distribution companies, uh, multiple distribution companies in which replacement of the old device is mandatory and scrapping of the old device is also mandatory. And the procedure for scrapping the old device is also predefined. So suppose somebody puts BLDC fan in your house, you'll have to deposit your old fan, whether working or not, and it will be scrapped through authorized scrappers and they'll be issuing a certificate also to the installer in this case, maybe ESL, and under DSM programs, various state governments, uh, you know, provide certain subsidies as well. So that subsidy would be available to the installer only and only when he submits the scrapping certificate to the DISCOM. So in effect, it is a way to ensure that the ineffective or inefficient product is going completely out of system, yet, the material value of the system is being completely utilized because there may be a lot of valuable metals in that, so that can be recycled and reused. Thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. So I just want to clarify, is this the incentive part that was spoken about, the incentive and uh, the adding to your cycle formation? Basically, uh, such initiatives are taken by DISCOMs on a state level basis. We try to partner with them, like I give an example. Uh, we are talking to BSS, Yamna and Rajdhani for including FAN in their DSM program, wherein they are filing a petition to regulatory commission to get a specific uh, discounts or you can say incentives for adoption of energy efficient FANs. They have already done this for air conditioners as of now. Odisha is another state which is very, very positive. In fact, we had signed MOU with all the four DISCOMs of Odisha. Now we are talking to UP and Bihar uh, for adoption of specific energy efficient solutions in their DSM program so that 
specific subsidies or incentives can be provided to end customer for adoption of these technologies at a faster pace? So your details are marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, thank you for this engaging session.